Oh 
Praise God. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Appreciate everyone that's here. It's good to have Brother Ishan's parents here. Brother, I had to ask somebody, Brother Sean, who is that guy sitting back there sitting next to him, Sister Nikki? I couldn't recognize you with your mask on. And I think you've changed your hair, maybe, a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, it's sure good to have you, both of you, with us today. We, we certainly make a lot of Brother Ishan. And uh, he's, got a, he's a special young man. He's got a special touch in his life from the Lord. He's been able to discern that from when he was a little boy. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> Sister Nikki, when Sister Nikki was in the church in Republic, she, she had that. She was very dedicated and very sincere in her walk with God. And I always appreciate that about her. Paul told Timothy, he said, he reminded him of his mother and his grandmother, Lois. A special touch she had in her life that Paul recognized in Timothy's life, and he reminded him of that. Told him, let him know to hold on to that. Don't let go of that. That's something special that God has touched you with. So anyway, we appreciate that. And then uh, to have uh, Sister Nova Lee. I, I had the Nova part, but she don't go by just Nova. She goes by Nova Lee. Yeah, that's a, what that is. It's a little unique, you know, in that way you don't forget it. You know, you, know, you don't forget, you know. Evidently, Brother Neff thinks there's something unique about it. Oh, but we're sure glad to have her here today. I'm not so sure this is her first time in a regular service with us. Is that right, or was you here another time? Was I not here? I can't believe that I'd be here and not recall that. And then her sister, Sister Ada, that's her back there. Raise your hand up, Sister Ada, so everybody can see you. Raise it up higher than that so, you know, all you boys see that. <laughs> yeah, I just... Where is she? Oh, there she is. So you look like you used to look. <laughs> All right. Yeah, stand so we can see it. Is it Myla? All right. Uh, see, she just looks like so much of a part back there. I just almost counted her as family. Regular, you know. Anyway, uh, Sister Ada, we're glad to have you too. You know, see, she came to watch after Sister Nova Lee. You know. Anyway, we really are glad to have you, you ladies, with us today, and uh, appreciate the Lord and these songs. It's reminded me of the um, this 149th Psalm that says, "Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song." and his praise in the congregation of the saints. You know, <clears throat> in the book of Revelations, there was a, uh, those in the 14th chapter of the book of Revelations in the first five verses that sang a new song that no one could sing but they that learned it. And she's talking about the bride of Christ that uh, and, and what that's, and, and then in the 15th chapter, it shows that, that that the bride was singing the song of Moses and the Lamb. The Moses, of course, the Old Testament, the law of God, and uh, the New Testament, the song of the Lamb, or to take the New Testament and the Old Testament and be able to harmonize it into one book or song. Uh, I'd like to, 
I'm working on that song, Brother Anthony. You working on it with me? I'm trying to learn how to sing that song and harmonize. Anthony loves music. And uh, I'm trying to get him to, I'm wanting him to learn how to play the bass guitar so Brother Mark can get back on the regular guitar and the fiddle and Michael can get off the bass and get on the organ and help us out. Uh, and uh, I mean, we've they, they got talent, but we 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 got to, we're trying to get the fullness of this song working on it. And uh, I'm trying to learn the song of blending the, you know, we've always said the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. The New Testament is a, it's concealed or it's hidden in the Old Testament unless you really get the mind of God, you probably wouldn't see it just like Israel didn't see it. In the, when Jesus came to this world, they didn't see him being the Messiah. And they rejected that as a whole of the nation, but there were those, there was a remnant that saw it, that got it. And the Apostle Paul was one of them. He didn't, he didn't accept that. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He belonged to a secular group. You know, there was a secular group of, of Jews, uh, different sects, secular groups that divided into Sadducees and Pharisees were the major uh, secular groups, but then there was Herodians and the Essians and Cretans and different divided groups that saw things differently and and uh, those groups never did see it. People came out of those groups, those that did see it, but the group itself didn't. And the Apostle Paul was, he was, he called himself a Pharisee of Pharisees. He, he sat under the feet of Gamaliel, which was a great teacher among the Pharisees in the Jewish uh, religion. And he fought against Christ and, and put many people in jail and prison. People were killed because of their belief in this Messiah. But when God, God knocked him down on the road to Damascus one day while he was in journey to do more damage to the church of the body of Christ. And he was blind. And, and the Lord spoke to him out of heaven because he was a chosen vessel. You know, nobody would have known he was chosen. Nobody believed he was until God finally manifested and showed it in him. But, but he spoke to him from heaven and said, and... Uh, and, and, and Paul asked him, you know, he asked the Lord what was going on and, and uh, the Lord told him it was hard for him to kick against the pricks. That's kind of a hard saying, but back in those days they used oxen to, to plow with, a team of oxen like, you know, others used teams of horses. I was telling somebody this week about my little grandfather, my mother's dad, he was a little guy. <clears throat> I, uh, I took after him a little bit, but he was way littler than me. He was a little guy. He wasn't just short, he was little. He wore a size five in man's shoes. And he was about five foot two, he's a little guy. But he was tougher than nails. <laughs> And back in those days, my grandparents, you know, when I was a kid, my grandparents didn't have vehicles. Papa Wilkett, my mother's dad, we called him Papa and Mama Wilkett. And we just picked it up from the girls. There was four girls in the family, and they, they called him Papa and Mama. And everybody just took that up, you know. The, the Wilkett, Mama's parents was Papa and Mama, and Dad's parents were Grandma and Grandpa. And uh, it's kind of like, 
my great grandkids. You know, Michael and his kids called me called me uh, Papa and Grandma Ann. But now Michael's kids, kids, his grandparents, they call me. They still call me Papa, and they call him Grandpa. And they call, but they call Ann. Different one. Stephen calls you Mimi, don't he? Gigi. Great grandma is what that Gigi I think stands for. Who else? They call her grandma. But they call Cindy. Well, and Andrew's kids call her Gamma. Gamma. Stephen, but you call her Mama. Calls her Ma? Mama. Mama. Oh. Cindy's not here today, by the way, because her her mother's very sick with her heart in the hospital, and so she had to make a a quick trip to what what it's not her heart, Ann. They brought her home. She's been yeah, and so she had to make a quick trip to Fort Worth for that reason, and that's why she's not here today, and. I uh, appreciate Brother Michael coming helping us on the song service. But um, anyway, uh, where was I talking that I got off on these grandkids? Oh, yeah, I was telling somebody about Papa uh, Wilkett that he had a team of horses. He had a wagon and horses. In fact, a lot of times we'd go We'd go to see him and him and Mama Wilkett and we'd see him in his wagon going down the road. And Dad would always pull over the car and let us kids out and we'd get in the wagon and ride with Papa the rest of the way home. But none of them, they didn't have cars and they didn't have running water in the house. They didn't have bathrooms. They, had, they didn't have electricity. I remember many times Papa, if I'd stay over at Papa's house or if we was even over visiting when it got dark, they had light a coal oil lamp for a little while, but he wouldn't waste oil on you long. He'd tell you, if you folks want to stay, we'll make a bed for you, but I'm, but we're going to bed. And he'd get up and blow out the coal oil lamp, and he knew that it was time to go home. I tried that one time with some folks that come to see us, and they just bored us to death, and they stayed forever. Finally, I got up and walked over to the couch and picked up the lady's purse, and I said, it sure has been nice for y'all to come. Here's your purse. Of course, Sister Smith chewed me out pretty good for that, and I never did do it again. (laughs) Well, you said I was rude. (laughs) She was thankful, but she said, you sure was rude. (laughs) Anyway. I guess I got that from Papa Wilkin. But anyway, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> one time Papa took his horses, my grand, my my uncle Herman Suttmiller, Brother Joe Suttmiller's dad, had a he was building onto his house and he had these great big cement steps. Uh to his front porch, had a big, you know, back in them days they had big front porches. He had steps that were probably 10 foot wide and they went up about four steps high and they were all made out of concrete. And they'd tried the Jeep and a tractor and chains and everything, try to get them steps out of there. Had to pull them steps out so they could get, you know, build onto this house. And they couldn't move them steps. And... Papa was over there one day, and they was telling him how they couldn't move them. He said, well, let's look at them. He went out there and looked at them, looked it over. He said, I can move them steps for you. He said, how do you think you're going to move them? He said, I ain't going to move them. But he said, smoke in them horses I got. He said, they pull them steps out of there. He said, you're crazy. He said, well, I'll bring them over here tomorrow and show you. So they went over the next day and hooked chains on them horses and backed them up hooked onto them steps. He took them horses by range. He said, get up. Them horses reached out and pulled. Them steps didn't move. Them chains come out to a strong, tight uh, stretch. 
And he, he popped them whips. He said, get them up. And them horses dug down into the ground and they started moving. When they did that, them steps moved just a little bit. He popped them one more time. He said, get them up. Them horses took off and them steps followed right along behind him. That's called unity. Those horses, they had enough unity. They got together. They'd been under the load together for so long. They learned how to work in unity. And, you know, things like that down through life just helps you. Anyway, I was just saying that about the oxen. Uh, I don't remember what I was mentioning about those oxen. Somebody help me on that. Kicking against the pricks. Thank you, Brother Durham. That's why I was just going to explain that. The oxen, see, the way when you, when, you, when you train oxen to pull a plow, whether it's just one oxen or a team of oxen or whatever, they, had, they, they put behind, they called them single or double trees that you had behind a, a team of animals to pull you hooked them up to a tree. It's just a, it's just a round uh, piece of lumber that, that they had fixed up where they could hook chains to it and hook onto them. But sometimes they would put these gourds or, or little spikes in that single tree that when, those, when you first started training an animal, they'd kick to try to get out of that. But when they'd kick, they'd hit that sharp spike and it'd, it'd hurt them. And they'd quit. It was hard for them to kick against the pricks. That's what that scripture's talking about. Paul, it was hard for Paul to kick against the things of Christ. Uh, he saw Stephen martyred. He saw him stoned to death. He, he saw that and, and he remembered that, and that. He knew something in his heart that was wrong, what was going on. And all that they were doing to rise up against this work of Christ being the Messiah, there was something that was pricking his heart about it. It was God dealing with him. God knocked him down on the road to Damascus and sent uh, a prophet, wasn't his name Agabus? And uh, to heal him of his, he was blind. God did that to him to show him you're blind Concerning the things of God. You're calling something evil that's not evil. You're calling my son someone that's not even uh, a righteous person or didn't come from heaven. You know, the Bible teaches that God created one thing. He created his son and his son created everything else that was created. God showed that when Jesus was talking in his life. He said, I'm not alone. There's another that bears witness of me. God helped him to, with a witness of the demonstration and power of the Spirit of God that bore witness from heaven that he was the Son of God. He reminded them of that. He said, I'm not alone. There's somebody else that's witnessing of me. And that was all of the miracles that he did, the power and demonstration of the Spirit. See, there's other gods. Isaiah talked about them. He said, there are no gods because they don't live. There's no power and demonstration of those gods. It's just a talk. It's just saying so. But it, there's not anything that's ever bore witness of them. Well, we're, see, we're living in a time when we, the early church, we have witness of the early church of what took place. And there is some factual evidence outside of the Bible of it. But we're all of the conglomeration, what we have today is what they had in the end of the Jewish world, which was a different secular groups. And that's what we've got in Christianity, different secular groups that, that, they have their own ideology and they may have a measure of truth in some of it. I think everyone has, in all of religion, has some measure of truth as far as righteousness and what's not righteous. 
But to identify the true God, uh, just one eternal God that started all this. He had one son, and that son created everything that was created after God created him. He's called the beginning of the creation of God. He was a creature. You can't be a part of the creation unless he was created. God created him and he created everything else because it pleased God. God wanted that. To, he wanted him to be his mouthpiece in the earth because it was in God's eternal plan in the beginning that he come because God knew it would, there would be a fall. Anytime you create someone like God had Jesus create man and give man a... Uh, Freedom of will, where you don't have to serve me. You're not a robot. You're not an angel. I didn't make you where you had to. But I, I created you so you could and gave you the ability to, to find me. God's been, been patient for a lot of years. After the fall, it took God 4,000 years to send his son to this world to manifest to the world. He did work with Israel down through that second 2,000-year period. The first 2,000 years, he, he had to start the world all over. He got so corrupt with Noah and the flood and just eight persons. But then out of Noah's ancestry, or out of his progeny, I should say, he developed uh, Abraham. What was his father's name? Tira. Yes, it was. And who from Tira came Abraham, which God made a covenant with, and uh, developed his promised child, Isaac. Uh, and then Jacob, the father of the 12 sons of, of Jacob, which he later named him, changed his name to Israel. And they came up with the 12 tribes of Israel. And God worked with those people uh, differently than he worked with any other people until he sent Jesus to the world. And most of them didn't recognize who he was. But there was a remnant that saw who he was. And so... <clears throat> And those people, they learned this new song. They were able finally to see the fulfillment of the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and then what Christ brought in grace in fulfilling the Old Covenant and bringing the reality of what was hidden there uh, to the people of God and being able to harmonize both books, that, that it was just really one book. They both spoke of one another. It says, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the, in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people and he will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Of course, a two-edged sword is the word of God. It doesn't just hurt the one that it, you, you know, when the sword of God's judgment comes against you, it doesn't just hurt the person that's being judged. It'll also hurt the one that's swinging the sword. There's a, there's a blade on the other side. There's, a two edged, there's two edges to that sword. Those that judge with the word of God have to also be judged by the word of God. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people and to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written this honor hath all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. And the way the saints has honor in that kind of judgment is just by living a righteous life. God's righteousness being finally developed in them. 
That's why it's necessary to be born again. We were born when we were children, like Job said, man is few days and full of trouble. You come into this world, you're, you're, you're born of the Adamic nature, the fallen man, the first man God made. He fell. He, he was born of God. He was made by God. He was God's creature. But he fell, and we none of us were made of God when we got to this world. God didn't make me. My mom and daddy did. They put their hands together, and here, here I am. And, uh, and it wasn't but a few days I was in trouble because that nature, that fallen nature of sinful man that I was born of began to work in me. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. It requires that new birth of God's nature, like Adam had in the beginning, that Jesus came this world with that nature, but he became a man like you and I so that he could be like us, yet like the first Adam, born of God and that God's righteousness would work in him. And of course he had, I said earlier, God created man with an ability and a will that you don't have to serve him. God doesn't require that of any man. You, 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 God will turn loose of you. If you don't want to serve him, you don't have to. In fact, you don't even have to ever even come to God. But, but the Bible says, a fool says in his heart, there's no God. You know, and I just happened to be fortunate enough that God, I got the exposure of this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and learned of God and I got that new birth experience as a young man. And I'm so thankful today. It's like these songs we were singing. I want to praise him for all that he's done for me. That's what that song's talking about. I'm thankful for today for God's working in my life and the new birth and what understanding I've come to in the Lord. And I know that there's more. Uh, I want more of him. You sing that song. More and more and more. <laughs> I want more of the Lord working in my life. I appreciate what he's done for me this far, but I know that there's a higher place. This psalm, this psalm said to sing of the high praises. You know, the more you know of him, the greater your praise comes. The greater, it's a higher praise. It's a a greater honor that you know about God. <coughs> and yes, it takes learning. It takes uh, submitting ourselves. It, you know, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth ever, ever, ever effort that every man puts forth to learn of God. You know, I've told this many times about this young lady that got married. <coughs> Sister Ada, I'm sure you've heard of this. You know, one of these days, you're probably going to marry somebody. Even Nova Lee probably will too. And this young lady, she got married, and their first Christmas, well, she was cooking her first Christmas dinner. And so she, she was, you know, it's a big job to cook a big Christmas dinner, you know. I mean, turkey and ham and dressing and, and beans and, Gravy, giblet gravy, and I mean dressing. I, I just ask my wife all the time, why do we have to wait till Thanksgiving and Christmas to get this? I don't get it. <laughs> Sister Jerry, you should fix me some dressing once in a while in July and August and bring it to me. Is this August? It's August. <laughs> and with giblet gravy. <laughs> Woo! Talk about good food. Anyway, she was cooking her dinner. Of course, you know, it kind of overwhelming for a young lady's first Christmas dinner. So she took the ham out and she said, honey, help me out here. 
She said, here's a ham. Cut the end of it off for me. He said, okay. So she gave him a butcher knife, and he took the ham, and he went to cut it off. And he stopped, and he said, why are, why are we cutting the end of the ham off? She said, I don't know. Just cut it off. He said, but why am I cutting it off? She said, because Mama always cut hers off, and it was good, and, and that's how we're going to do it. He said, well, I'd like to know why we're cutting the end of the ham off. She said, well, I don't know. He said, well, call your mama and ask her. So she called her mama on the phone and said, Mama, she said, you know, this guy I'm married to, he's, he's, he's got to know everything. and He wants to know why we cut the end of the ham off before we cook it for Christmas dinner. She said, I don't know. It's the way my mama always did it, and it was always good, so I always just done what mama did, and it works. So she told her husband that, and he said, call your grandma and ask her why we're doing this. So she called her grandma, and she said, Granny, she said, you know, mama said when you cook Christmas dinner, you always cut the end of the ham off. She said, and we're wanting to know why you did that. She said, well, honey, I never had a pan big enough to fit a whole ham in. <laughs> you know, some people are that way about religion. They just cut the end of the ham off. They just do. The, what they believe about God is what mom and daddy taught or what grandma taught or what Uncle Joe taught or... You know, in other words, they never really look into it. They just cut the end of the ham off. I'm just doing what I was taught to do. But they never really look into it. I told the Bible study class this morning, I said, I'm not Polly Parroting a message. I'm not Polly Parroting this message to you. I've thoroughly studied it out. I've looked to see whether or not there's any real truth in what I'm being taught. Because I'm not interested in just some religion. I want to know the truth of the God of heaven. And I've sought it out. And I'm convinced. I've tried to get around it. I told him, I said, it would be good if we could just do the best we can do and think we're going to make it into eternal life. But that ain't what the word of God teaches and that's not what the Bible teaches about God. I've looked into other religions. I've looked at them all. I've studied about it. I'm convinced that I'm following the right path. It's not a polyparrot message. I can't get around the message. It's the only message that makes any sense. Of course, you have to get the whole message. I understand that. <clears throat> I like the little story in the book of Ruth where Boaz told her, said, don't you go in any other field and, and, and reap. You stay in this field during the whole harvest. I know you have to have an understanding of that story, but I know what it means. And I don't intend to go in any other field. I've been in a lot of fields in my search. But I found the field wherein lies the pearl of great price. Jesus said that. He said, when you find that field wherein lays the pearl of great price, go sell everything you got and buy that field. Hallelujah. Praise God, I'm sold out. I found the field. I found the pearl of great price and I'm paying all I got to get it, to get the field. Hallelujah. Well, I'm glad today for God's goodness to us. Uh, I just wanted to open the service up and take prayer requests. And <clears throat> we do need to pray for Brother Wren, Brother Wren's wife. Sister Wren passed away this, this week. And uh, she's been sick for a long time. And, and uh, you, know, you know, right now people get sick and go in the hospital and a loved one can't even go in there and be with them while they're dying. Thank God they... Brother Wren said, send her home. If you say she can't live, send her home. We'll just, we'll trust God 
on what he does and we'll be there with her, at least console her and be there with her through, through her death. And that's what they did. And so our church is sending, sending uh, an offering to help with the funeral situation uh, just like we did with Brother and Sister McPhee and Sister McPhee's sister and her funeral. And then Brother Mike Utley in Sebastopol passed away the day before yesterday with COVID-19. He'd been under, uh, he's in his late 60s, I believe, and, and uh, he'd been in on the uh, ventilator and just worse things gets got worse and worse. And anyway, they lost him this past week, the day before yesterday. Sister Brenda Utley, or his wife, needs our prayers. Brother Bud's really still going through, you know, his grieving process. It's just amazing. He, he just about calls me every day. He, he just needs somebody to a sounding board, you know. I'm just listening to him. I, can't, I don't know how to relate, you know. I've never been through what he's... I've lost loved ones, but I've never lost my wife. And... Uh, after you've been married for 52 years, it's pretty hard to, I think that's how long. Was they married 53 or 50? If she had lived in February, but she died in January, so. But sometimes he called me, he said, I'm just having a terrible day. I just can't, I can't get up. You know, he told me the other day it's raining. He said, it's just a dreary day, and it's just one of them days I can't get nothing off my mind but Eudora. And so he just needs somebody to talk to, you know, and I just let him talk. And I talk to him sometimes, just get his mind going in another direction or something. But anyway, mostly I just listen to him. Pray for Brother Bud, too. Also, Brother Shelby, uh, you know, he's got COVID-19, and he is in the hospital, and he just went on a ventilator this week, and they are not giving him much hope at all. Brother Ron Johnson is who he's got to answer to the medical team for anything that you know that that they need to know from somebody that's in charge. So, of course, Alice, she's they've been he's been with Alice thirty years, but she's got Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's, and he hardly knows what day it is. They tell me so. Anyway, pray for Brother Shelby. Also, Brother Ray and Susan Weaver certainly need her prayers. Uh, Sister Cindy's mom. Remember her in prayer. Sister, what's her first name? Uh, Angie. Sister Angie. Uh, huh? What about her? Yeah. got to turn you on. Go get you. Test it there. Last time she was had they had Just hold on a minute. Let him find it. Okay. Tap it on top or something. There you go. Um, when they imaged her heart in October, it was normal. They imaged her heart now. It's got an enlarged area. They said that scar tissue, she's obviously had a heart attack at some point. And it's not functioning at full function. And medication um, and a defibrillator is what she's got to have. Her, her blood pressure bottomed out to like, 30 over 60 or something like that, and her heart rate was in the 30s. And uh, so they've, they're controlling it with medication, but the doctor had told them she might, not, you know, this may be just an ongoing thing, um, trying to get, you know, it's going to adjust, and then it only do, her heart's damaged is what he said, saying. So um, the, 
they're, pray for the, the her and the, the kids trying to figure out how to care for her. Um, so just give an update on that. Cindy had a rough weekend this weekend. She's 82 years old, I think. So anyway, she's a precious saint of God, so remember her in your prayers. What else? I know there's others. Sister G- Jerry? see if it comes out negative, so remember that. My my cousin, which is Sister Pat Arthur's his daughter, Jenny, who is a, she's a uh, nurse, practitioner. nurse practitioner, and her and her husband and several people in his church has got COVID-19. They, they just found out, yeah, they, I mean, they, recently, and they're, they really never got real bad with it. They're they're okay now, but anyway, I'm sure they'd like for us to pray and pray for their church people that's got it. What else? Sister Gail? Sister Brenda, yes, she certainly needs her prayer. Sister Ann? Sister Deb, okay, remember that. All right, anything else? Yes. Yeah, she called me last week, and uh, she she mentioned you. She, in fact, she wanted to try to get a hold of you. She didn't know how, other than write a letter. So remember, Sister Hodges. She's this, you know, the the church here. Uh, you know, really means a lot to her. And of course, Cato, back when he was just a little boy, she brought him out of Haiti. And, so we need to remember she's getting up in age. I think she's in her 90s, I believe. Yeah, and so she still has her mind, Sister Durham. Remember that. Also, the reason Brother Joe and Sister Ruth isn't here today is Brother Joe's sick today, so they need your prayers. Sister Gail? Huh? Kayla, all right. Remember Kayla. All right. Yes, Sister McGowan. She's she's home out of the hospital, but we need to certainly remember my prayer. It's going to take her some time to get over her surgery and Brother McGowan's, of course, with her, so remember them in your prayers, Sister Linda. Unspoken request. All right. How many's got an unspoken request today? Well, let's remember that. Remember the Shepherd Assembly. I know they feel it when with these girls not being there with them today, so remember that church. Praise God. You want to stand and pray. If the ushers will come, we'll also... Have them receive your tithes and offerings at this time. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness to us. Oh, God, I know you're aware of our needs and our petitions, but we need your help, Lord. We're your children. You're our present help in the time of need, the Bible says. You're our shield and our buckler, our strength. Our help, oh God, we're asking you for help concerning these needs that are mentioned in these unspoken requests, Lord. I know you're aware of all of our situations. Oh God, we ask you today to help us, Lord. Blessed Lamb of God, we we give you praise, Lord, for your goodness to us. and Your concern, oh God. 
Help us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. No, I didn't mention Brother Veely's little granddaughter. What's her name? Bella? Bella? Yeah, remember her if you would today. God bless your hearts. You can be seated. God bless you as you give. Uh, by the way, let me say this. We've got a new projector ordered that's supposed to really have a really good picture and screen to it. I know this one here's just wore out, but it's on. It's been back ordered for a couple weeks, or we'd already have it here and up. So pray that it gets here as quick as we can. Get it here. And we'll get it up for you, so it'll make make it a lot easier on you. God bless your hearts. Oh, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Oh, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and the Saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hands. Oh, let the high praises of God.
it's all in our hands. Ethan, if uh, you got me on, I just might mention again about having these Wyrick ladies here with us today. Aren't y'all glad they're here? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know if they, I don't know if they're going to both testify or if they're both going to sing a song together, if they're going to sing two songs. I don't know how they're going to do this, but we're not going home till they get it done. So they just well to start in, don't y'all think? <laughs> I mean, I'm not putting them on the spot, or not trying to, but at the same time, I just want them to know how much we appreciate them being here. And we don't want to let them get out of here without depositing something because I know about these girls these girls are not fly by nighters I mean they're working their church and uh, who knows who knows both of them love to marry somebody and live right here in Little Rock and work in ours and they just might as well try it out a little bit just in case praise God You see, Nova Lee's the oldest. So do you reckon the oldest one probably ought to kind of take the initiative here? <laughs> I'm thankful to be here today. Um, apparently I have to say something about it. <laughs> Normally I sing because I'm not a huge public talker, but um, I am thankful to be here today. I'm thankful that I'm able to see, sorry, feel the spirit here. Um, thankful for Ness and for his family allowing us to stay with them and and for a welcoming environment. And um, yeah, I'm just I am thankful. <laughs> Um, well, I'm also very thankful to be here today and to have the opportunity to come here with my sister and visit Neth and his family, and they've been very welcoming for us, and um, all of y'all have too, and I just really appreciate it, and we've had a great time so far, and I know we will the rest of the days that we're here. We leave on Tuesday, so not that long, but 
Um, I'm just, I'm very thankful that we have the opportunity to visit with everybody and be here with everyone that we love. So. On an airplane. <laughs> yes, sir. A little bit. <laughs> um, sure. All right. Thanks. Praise God. Ada's got one. She's going to tell it to you when she gets here. <laughs> She's drawing a blank. Ada, I think Ada's got the goods. She plays a song in her church. She knows. Tell me a few songs y'all know. I'll pick one for you. You need the one of you can think of a song that y'all know. It's a drawing blank. While y'all think, come up with one. I'm going to honor our. High school graduates. So, <clears throat> you know, we're fortunate to have these young people in our church. And, and uh, so, and then, you know, we're fortunate to have them uh, have them uh, and see them finish their high school education. You know, the the Bible tells us to to go to the (laughs) ant, the little ant. It says they're working all the time in the summertime. They're storing up food for the winter. And you know, that's how you have to be in education. you got to work at it. Sometimes it's a little hard. You know, when I was a boy in school, well, my dad, he had a law for us boys. It took him a while to figure out what to do. But he said, right, here's what I'm going to tell you boys. He said, every one of y'all are smarter than average. But he said, I ain't going to tolerate nothing below average in your grades. But he said, I won't be happy with average. You should come up with better than that. For yourself, for your own integrity, for your own purpose in life, you ought to have enough integrity to show. But here's what he said. He said, if you come home with less than an average grade in any subject, we had every six weeks we got a report card in the schools. In those days, that's the way it was. Every six weeks you got a report card. He said, if you come home with a C minus in any subject, you're grounded for the next six weeks. You don't go nowhere. You don't ask to go nowhere. And boy, and and I tried him out on that one six weeks. And he was serious. He stuck to his guns. That was the longest six weeks. I mean, it lasted for 60 weeks. (laughs) Kind of like Jesus is 49... uh, uh, 70 times 70 is to require repentance. You know, there ain't no end to this deal. 
Well, I never made a C minus after that, but he did help me to understand that I was smarter than the average cat. He put that he put that thought in me. He said, you don't have to be average. You can be above average. And so I got to making B's and B pluses and A's and, and uh, realizing the, the achievement of pushing myself to see what I could be, even in things that I didn't want to be, helped me to realize that I can do it. Let me tell you something. High school is just a four-year deal. And you can do it. Every one of you kids, you can do what is greater than is required of just being average. And I'm thankful for all of our young people that labor and work and achieve that ultimate goal. And so uh, I want to, we'll start off with Sister Jerry Fritz and uh, Sister Sandra's granddaughter. She's really more like her daughter. She raised her from a baby, really. And okay. Uh, and so uh, there, you know, I was going to have both brother, uh, Sister Jerry and brother Neth. Uh, to come on in, and uh, I want to recognize them for their graduation. They didn't get to graduate this year because of, or they, they did graduate, but they didn't get to go through a ceremony hardly because of this coronavirus deal. So, But we want to recognize them here in our church. So if they'll come on up, we'll, we'll recognize them both. Brother uh, Painter has a graduation song that we can play. mentioned both of them. We'll start off with Sister Jerry. We always try to honor the ladies first. She uh, had several accomplishments uh, in her education. She was chief of her first, re of her first responder class. She received the perfect attendance reward, award she received the Academic Award for Civics. The Academic Award also for English. Also for Music Achievement Award in Choir. A reading Award two years in a row for reading 200 and 300 books. She received FEMO certificates, the CPR certification, one pink cord for six years of choir, and one red and one white cord for finishing. Five family and consumer science classes, a partial EMT certification, because they got out of school early, so I was partial. Anyway, so <clears throat> uh, she graduated with several honors, and we're uh, thankful for that. And uh, we want to recognize such a great achievement of high school graduation yeah. for Sister Nicole Fitz. 
you, Dad. <laughs> you move your deal over? There you go. All right. You want to just change places for a second? Brother Neff, <clears throat> he also acquired accomplishments in his high school education. He became chief also of the North Little Rock Youth Fire Explorers of post 99-11. He uh, also for volunteering at homeless shelters in North Little Rock area. Uh, also for crowd control and fire instruction at public events in North Little Rock. And works, he also works a full-time job at uh, Lafferty Equipment. He also uh, plays the drums here at First Gospel, shares with Brother Caleb Stewart. And he's worked and served as a servant in the church as usher for several years now. So we appreciate Brother Neff. He also had a four point, point he had A's in school and a four point O average in education. So Brother Neff, we congratulate you today and appreciate <laughs> you. All right, you want to give them one more hand together? God bless your heart. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for such a great accomplishment. God bless your hearts. You're first. <laughs> All right. Did y'all y'all thought of a song? Did you really? <laughs> All right. All right. Well, you want to sing it for us? Now, let me tell you, the, I think both these girls are, are accomplished piano players. But I've kind of, you, 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 do you play the piano at all? You don't? But Sister Nova Lee does. And... <clears throat> I kind of put them on the spot here. I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead and apologize to you right now, but I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> Since I done already got you all up, look like the girls are going to help you a little bit there, but we just want you all to be part of the family here when you come. You're family away from family, you know what I mean? Anyway, we're, we do appreciate you coming, and I, I'm sorry that I'm so mean.
See you next Sunday morning. Huh? I'm, what did you say? Oh. Well, we'll we definitely will have regular breakfast downstairs at 9.30, and, and I don't know if there's something else planned for his. We'll tell you about it. I'll be on live Thursday night on Facebook. Table downstairs. Yes, we do have a table downstairs. Uh, did we do all that for breakfast? Yeah, we did it for breakfast. All right, God bless your hearts. I'll see you next Sunday. Thank you, Brother Sean.